those who have put in so much time to organize this. Um, Brian Wilder, who leads um, Climate Action Rhode Island's and Fossil Fuel Financing Group, uh, countless volunteers, and Rabbi Aaron Filmus, who's next on our list to uh, speak to us today. Want climate justice. When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! What is our purpose as human beings? Why did we arrive so late in the story of evolution? The Torah teaches that humans are here to be God's representatives on earth. We're here to monitor and manage the health of all creation. In the Torah it says, Elohim et adam began eden God took Adam and placed them in the garden to serve and protect her. When the Holy Blessed One created the first human, God took them and led them around all the trees of the garden. My works how beautiful they are. Pay attention. Do not corrupt and destroy my world. If you ruin it, there is no one after you to repair it. In the story of Noah and the flood, the Torah tells us seven times that the problem with humanity was not their violence or their moral, moral corruption. It was that their violence and moral corruption was ruining the earth. And God saw the land and behold, she was ruined for all flesh had destroyed its way on the land. Our ancestors came out of the cradle of civilization, Mesopotamia, a dry river valley where farmers dug canals to irrigate their crops. Over the course of generations, water evaporated in the desert sun and the soil became too salty to support life. The to let the soil recover by letting the fields go fallow. But the rulers and the rich people in the cities forced them to keep farming the land until it was completely destroyed. Our ancestors witnessed this self-destruction and understood their relationship with the land must be an act of service to the Holy One. The commandment of Shemitah, of giving the land a year of rest every seventh year was their solution to what happened. This is the Shemitah year, the year of rest. These laws in the Torah teach an essential life-saving lesson for our people today. That the earth and all of their creatures are not here to serve us. We are here to serve them. At the top of the hierarchy of living beings, we are in the center of the garden. And all of the creatures are around us, looking to us, depending on us to serve and watch over them, to enhance life on earth. This climate chaos is already transforming the way all creatures on Earth live. Deadly heat waves, droughts, crop shortages, massive wildfires, more frequent and intense hurricanes and downpours like Hurricane Ida that killed over 50 people in the Northeast. Longer and more intense droughts in poor and politically unstable countries create humanitarian crisis for people who have contributed almost nothing to the climate change. ...for war and massive waves of refugees which makes it a perfect setup for autocrats and dictators to rise to power. And there's an urgent notice for Israel and Palestine. The science is telling us that the Holy Land is warming five times faster than the global average. Polar ice and glaciers are melting fast, contributing to rising seas, which will flood coastal cities and cause more waves of climate refugees. As permanently frozen ground in the Arctic is melting, huge amounts of CO2 and methane are being released, compounding the crisis much faster than projected. As their habitats change, some species will be able to move to new locations, but the change is happening so fast that many will go extinct. It's mass extinction that has happened in millions of years. When asked for her message to the world's leaders, this is a youth-led day of action around the country. There's youth leading protests like this in every part of the country at Chase Banks. Youth activist Greta Thunberg said to the leaders of the world, you have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet I'm one of the lucky ones. 
People are suffering, people are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We're in the beginning of a mass extinction and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? How dare you, Chase Bank? How dare you? For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. How dare you continue to look away and come here saying that you're doing enough when the politics and solutions needed are still nowhere in sight. You say you hear us and that you understand the urgency, but no matter how sad and angry I am, I do not want to believe that. Because if you really understood the situation and still kept on failing to act, then you would be evil. And that I refuse to believe. The executive director of the International Panel on Climate Change recently said in a press conference, scientists have been telling us for over three decades of the danger of allowing the planet to warm. The world listened, but it did not hear. The world listened, but it did not act strongly enough. As a result, human-caused climate change is a problem that's here now. Nobody is safe, and it's getting worse faster. The great shofar, this is not the IPCC guy, this is me talking. The great shofar, the ram's horn, has been sounded, and we have no choice but to hear it. We must respond now before it's too late. So I'm gonna sound this shofar, this ram's horn, as an alarm and as a call to action that we as a species might wake up and respond to this planetary emergency. change our fate if we can get our country and the other wealthiest country to move to net zero carbon emissions by 2050 we can avert the worst of the crisis today we must ask ourselves what kind of world do we want to create the great unraveling a world of breakdown conflict droughts floods and endless waves of refugees where hope slips away or we can be part of a new era of healing There was first the agricultural revolution, then the industrial revolution, and now, now we're in the most important moment in human history. A revolution many are calling the great turning, when we quickly band together as a species and create a world that is renewed and regenerated, where forests have regrown and cities are remade. What is happening to the world, our first reaction is to turn away, not because we don't care, but because we care too much and it's too painful. We feel small and weak in the face of a global crisis. The great rabbi, doctor, and philosopher Maimonides taught in the 12th century, he said, know that the whole of creation, the earth, is a single being which has the same status as a person, endowed with heart and soul. Our earth is not just a supply house or a sewer. Yeah. She is a living being. And we are part of her living body and soul. We are the eyes of the earth. We are the ears and the mouth and the hands of the earth. And now we're standing here today and she is speaking through us. We are not small and weak in the face of corporations like Chase Bank. We are mighty in strength and numbers standing here today. We are linking arms with all of the creatures on earth with all of our ancestors and with the future generations. By linking arms with them and taking action, we can and we will rise up from the wreckage. With tears and with courage, we will fight for life and fulfill our purpose as human beings in this critical moment of the great turning. Thank you.